I think you understand that any transfer of military equipment to Ukraine doesn't happen spontaneously. I assume that on May 29th, the Swedish general staff didn't just randomly select airborne early warning aircraft from their inventory of Visby class corvettes, Mjolnir self-propelled artillery systems and other weapons to give to Kiev. This is a well-developed strategy to increase the capabilities of the Ukrainian armed forces air power for no particular reason. And of course, the decision to transfer two Saab 340 aircraft with the Airborne Surveillance and Control 890 radar system was made quite some time ago. How long ago it was can be understood by seeing who will be operating the Saab 340 Airborne Early Warning. If it's Ukrainians, then it means this idea was conceived at least last year. And if foreign specialists will be carrying out the tasks of monitoring the aggressor's airspace, then the decision may not have been made last year. The Air Force exercises will occur in Germany from June 12th to June 23rd. Finland, a new NATO member, and Sweden, soon to join the alliance, will participate in the exercises. Sweden has been participating in NATO exercises for a long time. In 2021, a sub-340 airborne early warning aircraft participated in the air component of Steadfast Defender. As you understand, the most important element of the exercise is practicing a unified command system, which allows for improved coordination and cooperation between the forces of different countries. What does this mean? For example, the Swedish Airborne Early Warning Aircraft is equipped with Link 16 data exchange equipment. This is a communication and navigation system that supports data exchange between tactical command, aircraft, ships and ground units. In essence, it's a vast integrated network. The Patriot Air Defense System, High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, Rocket System, Western Radar Stations, Caesar and Panzerhaubitze, Self-Propelled Artillery and the F-16S Ukraine will receive all support integration with Link-16. This means that, for example, the radar station of the Patriot Air Defense System can operate in passive mode while being in close proximity to the front line. In other words, it doesn't emit radio waves to avoid detection. Instead, the Swedish aircraft will operate, which, thanks to its flight altitude, can serve as a radar station and stay out of range of enemy air defenses. After detecting the Russian aircraft and tracking it, the Saab 340 Airborne Early Warning will provide the Patriot Air Defense System with the target's coordinates and a surface-to-air guided missile will be launched at the target immediately. Approximately the same principle works with other systems as well. The airborne early warning aircraft can detect enemy multiple rocket launch systems and instantly provide targeting data to high mobility artillery rocket system or Caesar via Link 16. The F-16 will also perform some combat missions without using its onboard radar systems. Russia has also developed systems similar to Link 16. For example, the automated tactical command and control system has not been fully integrated into the occupying forces. We basically lack a military automated command and control system in the Ministry of Defense. The automated tactical command and control system was dead from the start, meaning it was an absolutely corrupt project from the beginning, with enough criminal cases to stack up. There were criminal cases, but they were against those who raised concerns about the project. Will there be criminal cases now? I really hope so. Friends, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also share this video with your friend. Just do it right now. Send it to your buddy. This will really help spread the content. Thank you in advance. Let's return to the topic. Don't misunderstand. This doesn't mean smart systems will now handle everything for Ukrainian soldiers. No, the aim is to reduce the combat management cycle as much as possible. And the long-range radar detection aircraft will play a key role here. Saab 340. Airborne Early Warning is capable of performing missions under enemy jamming conditions thanks to the IRIA radar with an active phased array antenna. By the way, yes, you shouldn't consider the small size of the radar array installed on the Swedish aircraft as a disadvantage. Despite the much larger size of the radar system on the A-50, it should be noted that the Russian radar uses a passive phased array antenna, which makes it less effective under conditions of intense electronic countermeasures. As you know, this is extremely important. In fact, the Saab 340 Airborne Early Warning actually has a slightly greater target detection range than the A-50, 450 kilometers versus 400. Of course, the stationary radar on the Saab has one disadvantage compared to the rotating radar on the A-50. This is the need for the aircraft to adjust its position to get the required viewing angle. Yes, the size also impacts the Airborne Early Warning aircraft's flight duration. If the A-50 can only patrol for 4 hours without refueling, the Saab can fly for all 9. 
having two aircraft would help to control the situation better. Because uh, in addition to protecting the airspace, we also need to talk about operations over enemy territory, over temporarily occupied territory. And the Air Force spokesperson was absolutely right to point out, this will make it easier to detect air defense systems because right now this is done using reconnaissance drones and some other systems. And this will allow us to see all of this from the aircraft and provide targeting information for destruction by the same Army tactical missile system. But it's not all that rosy. In the video about Ukrainian UAVs, we calculated that Russia lacks sufficient air defense systems to shoot down small composite targets. And we turned out to be 100% right. But in that same video, I stated that Russia's problem is that its air defense system was built for much bigger challenges than small drones. That is only now can the Russian air defense system realize its full potential. The S-400 systems can shoot down targets up to 400 kilometers away using the 40N-6 missiles. That's under ideal conditions. When the target is above the radar horizon, it would be extremely risky for the Swedish airborne early warning aircraft to reach its maximum altitude of 7 kilometers near the front line. They'll have to descend, losing their ability to scan the airspace effectively. The lower the Saab 340 flies, the less area it can cover. So, it will be a constant competition for air dominance. What I mean is that, in fact, throughout human history, there have never been wars like this, where states with such complex systems in their arsenals have clashed. And to be honest, it's absolutely unclear how they will work against each other. But as we noted in the previous video, judging by the fact that the armed forces of Ukraine are systematically disabling over-the-horizon radars, S-400 and S-300 surface-to-air missile systems and shooting down the A-50 if this practice continues or even scales up, then the skies for the Saab 340 plus F-16 combination will become freer. This matter should still be taken seriously since there is an accumulation of a certain critical mass in terms of supplying weapons and military equipment to Ukraine. Sooner or later, a chain reaction may begin when the weapons become quite sufficient to solve such large operational and strategic tasks. I didn't just mention the combination of the F-16 and the Saab 340 for nothing. According to open source intelligence, Ukraine will receive F-16S upgraded to the mid-life upgrade standards, bringing them up to the F-16 Block 5052 level. The radars on these models are capable of detecting targets at a distance of 110 kilometers, and target lock-on is even less than that. The Su-35 equipped with the Urbisi radar can detect targets up to 400 kilometers away. That is, objectively, American fighters from the 2000s are inferior to modern Russian ones. Prepare for the likelihood that Ukraine will be at a disadvantage in an aerial battle. After all, for the FS-16 to hit a target, it not only needs to detect the enemy aircraft but also keep it illuminated until the missile seeker locks onto it. And considering that Russian fighters will spot the American plane much earlier, that's just suicide. Because while the F-16's onboard radar system is guiding the missile toward the area with the enemy fighter, the F-16 will have to get closer to the enemy aircraft and that's very dangerous. So, we would hardly see such aerial battles between Russian and Ukrainian aviation. That means we could also forget about chasing away the Su-34, which launches guided aerial bombs, because the Su-34S always carry out their missions with the support of the Su-35. Ukraine will now have the Saab 340, which will substitute for the F-16's imperfect radar system with its own radar. So, in this combination, the American fighter will simply serve as a platform, a missile carrier, following the fire and forget principle. Meanwhile, Swedish airborne early warning aircraft will illuminate, acquire and track targets. According to Business Insider's analysis of Ukrainian military videos, Ukraine has adopted Vietnam War-era United States Air Force tactics. It involves pilots allowing enemy combat radars to detect them and then striking with air-to-ground missile 88 high-speed anti-radiation missile missiles. These missiles have a range of 150 kilometers and they are launched using iPad tablets. Because otherwise, it would be impossible to integrate an American missile onto Soviet fighter jets. Of course, such workarounds don't allow the missile to reach its full potential. Because, once again, any missile needs target illumination for guidance. 
So with the presence of the F-16, which has more powerful onboard radars and a Swedish airborne early warning aircraft serving as the early warning plane, it will be possible to fully unlock the potential of Western weaponry by maintaining already established tactics. And that's another advantage of transferring Swedish airborne early warning aircraft. The second point is the high-speed anti-radiation missile missiles, anti-radiation missiles, which will work properly, not through the makeshift solutions we have now. Accordingly, the result will be different. And what does suppressed air defense mean? It means that high-mobility artillery rocket system, or rather drones and high-mobility artillery rocket system, can operate. And that means we can once again take out logistics, rear positions, and priority targets. This means that the line of contact becomes difficult and you can try to advance using first-person view drones and other means. I won't get tired of repeating that we, my friends in our videos, are trying to talk about trends. In the video before last, we discussed what opportunities Ukraine would have if it received the Sapsan Operational Tactical Missile System. The Z supporters mocked the advanced system a lot. But a couple of days later, some democratic capitals approved strikes by the armed forces of Ukraine on Russian territory using Western weapons. It was revealed that Ukraine's Neptune anti-ship cruise missile struck an oil terminal at Russia's port of Kavkaz, marking its first use on Russian territory. So it may have been Neptune, not Sapsan, does it matter? As I wrote about Ukrainian strikes on Russian over-the-horizon radar stations in the previous video, news arrived about Sweden transferring long-range airborne early warning aircraft. It became clear that I should make videos more frequently. Just kidding. Ukraine's strategy is emerging with the primary objective of preventing Russia from gaining air superiority. Let me emphasize once again, of course Russia still has the advantage in all types of weaponry and an absolute advantage in long-range strike capabilities. Everything I'm trying to say in my videos, I'll honestly say this one last time, is that Ukraine, with the right geopolitical background, may continue to gain new opportunities. As for Russia, at best, its opportunities remain at the same level, and in some areas they are decreasing. Ukraine has already destroyed at least four radar systems from the Nebo family, which, according to experts, are worth about $100 million. There is only one conclusion to be drawn from this. It goes as follows. Everyone who supports the war against Ukraine is an idiot. Well, maybe before the special military operation, the mood in the country was different, right? Have you noticed how the mood in the country has changed over these two years? It's become easier to breathe, hasn't it? Well, yeah, idiots. And what do you call those who are happy about the capture of the village Lukyansi? At the same time, they don't notice how their nuclear power is losing hundreds of its most important systems in Ukraine, systems they'll never be able to restore because the component base of such complex systems is entirely Western. So, the loss of a single Nebo-M isn't just a loss of tens of millions of dollars, it's also a loss of combat capability for years. And yet Russia plans to march all the way to the English Channel. But now this Ukraine has appeared in their way, and soon they'll even have F-16S with long-range radar detection. What a setback. A massive Russian electronic warfare strike is launched, activating all electronic jamming systems of the Western Military District and the Baltic Fleet. The NATO radars go blind, they can't see anything. At this time, Russian military transport planes land on the Swedish island of Gotland, delivering S-400 surface-to-air missile systems and, at the same time, Bastion coastal anti-ship missile systems. They're being deployed there. Currently, no one sees or knows anything. The West is perplexed, questioning the efficacy of their radar systems. At the same time, the Suwauki Corridor, here it is. The Kaliningrad Group of the Russian Army and the Belarusian Armed Forces block the Suwauki Corridor, join together and isolate NATO and Poland from the Baltic countries. At the same time, in Tallinn, in Riga, and in Vilnius, polite people suddenly appear who are warmly welcomed by the local population, and those who don't welcome them simply hide and lock themselves in their apartments. At the same time, 